Stuart from Parnell Harvest showing you the Edible Trails project, the mothership, if you will, at the De Young Natural Area at the Leland Law Conservancy. So check out edibletrails.org for more info, but I'll show you a little bit of everything here that uh, a few local groups put together in, here in northern Michigan, just north of Traverse City, uh, and it's coordinated by a uh, stellar, eager, and knowledgeable chap named Jonathan Aylward. So he's doing a really good job put all this together. And so if you are local, you want to volunteer and help out, uh, contact him. Check out from the website. Um, or if you want to bring this to your area, give him a shout. Uh, also, uh, facebook.com slash edible trails. Check out this uh, pollinator patch here. It's Gigantic uh, sunflowers. Someone threw what is some some squash in here? Okay, that's a surprise. Uh, we planted a bunch of butterfly wheat too for the monarchs, but those didn't take. Uh, there's some people biking. Uh, but this is from the No Foraging, No Food uh, local, obviously foraging group. Uh, donated a bunch of seeds. Here's part of the tea patch. We got a lot of a lot of strawberry. We had some bayberry, but it's not happy right there. Uh, there's a big comfrey starting, and a volunteer sunflower. But we did have a bunch of uh, here's sweet goldenrod. That's uh, Saladego odora, and then uh, New Jersey tea I was hiding out here too. New Jersey tea and sweet goldenrod were the Liberty tea during the revolution when they dumped the uh, the British tea they used uh, some local ones So they made a, a Liberty or Patriots tea with sweet goldenrod, New Jersey tea uh, Batany sometimes and also Crimson clover. So that was the Liberty tea during the revolution. So we're trying to grow a little bit of that here We've also got some uh, heritage apple varieties that have been in northern Michigan for 200 plus years this trail underneath, the, underneath this trail is cardboard to suppress this grass. Really tough, tough grass. So uh, with limited volunteer time, we went with the suppression method. Uh, so we got some more fruiters here. We had some nanny bear over there, wild raisin, which is nice. Uh, persimmons. There's the persimmon, another one. That cool little side and that uh, we had some volunteers put together. Liana is one of our clutch volunteers, and she did all the signs. So there's a little baby Saskatoon. Real good antioxidants. One of the new superfoods. Big comfrey. So keep in mind when you guys are making fruit tree guilds, comfrey is going to really bring up the nutrients for you. You can do a chop and drop, cut it. Uh, up to four times a year, and those leaves are just packed with nutrients. But remember, it, it can get big, so you want some good spacing a few feet away from your main tree. Oh, there's another big nanny berry there. Oh, there's the fig. Hardy fig. Here's part of our, our hoop oh, with, with some amaranth and some sheep sorrel weeds coming in, of course. Uh, no one to maintain. They're gonna come in, but uh, a cool little yarrow. We got some chokeberry. Chokeberry's happy. That one's happy. This one's happy. Blueberry's okay. Blueberry was not happy. That got eaten. That was uh, like actually some deer. This was eaten too. You see that show? So uh, yeah, that's one thing to keep in mind. You're doing a public free food forest like this. To uh, maybe put some cages up on some of your, your delicate guys. They didn't really get a chance to do that. You kind of suffered. So here's the next stage of the hugel culture. So you can see the logs. So uh, they're rotten or uh, rotting. So that's going to be a nutrient and moisture release as they break down. So uh, kind of building up. So there'll be less watering. It's good for different plants here. So, uh, real good for rhubarb too because rhubarb likes a little more rich soil. Great for at your house or in your compost. So that's uh, kind of the not finished.
just because there's something that's a weed and things need to grow. And then here's the start. And then black raspberry, uh, chestnut. The chestnut right there. So we've got some, some good guys potentially. So, yeah, picture this. In uh, a few years, we'll have um, some more fruit on, on a lot of these kicking out. And then uh, the apples. And the fruit. So, uh, yeah, see the links below to uh, bring this to your area or to ask Jonathan Aylward, the coordinator, you know, how it was done, how uh, you can do it in your area. And check out the website, edibletrails.org. Uh, and this is, here we go, here's the community. Here's a good example of a fruit tree guild right in front. There's a uh, comfrey. That's strawberry, chives. The uh, comfrey is the most beneficial for all the nutrients it brings up. But these are good ground cover. The chives and the strawberry. So that's uh, another heritage apple. Kind of a legacy species up here in uh, northern Michigan. Yeah, there's that New Jersey tea with a nice label from Liana. So, uh, yeah, nice flowers, nitrogen fixing. Pretty good. So we planted a, a red raspberry patch. We got some coming up. So we're even fruiting and stuff. And then we've got blackberries coming in. These might have been uh, just wild. A lot of times blackberries do well in kind of barren soil. But as we improve the soil with our mulch and stuff, uh, if we wanted to leave the blackberries, they would do better and fruit a lot better too. Normally in barren soils, we're just going to barely kick out fruit and stay low. Um, so yeah, here's a little wild fruit surprise. And then here's our pollinator patch again. So giant sunflowers, they're going to they're gonna get taller too. And then <laughs> the squash, which is fun. Mullen, a little wild uh, flower, also known as hunter's toilet paper. Those leaves are super soft. And then uh, you can actually use parts of the flower for uh, like a bronchial tea, good for uh, clearing up uh, lung issues and stuff, so a lot of good stuff already out there too if you know where to look for it. And last but not least, silver buffalo berry, nitrogen fixer, high antioxidant berries, and uh, look familiar? It's the native version of autumn olive, so otherwise exactly the same, plus it's a uh, level of bison, which the autumn olive is, is not quite as good. This is about three times as, as good. Uh, there's a lot of levels of so uh, yeah, otherwise exactly the same. So nectar, berries, nitrogen fixing. So uh, yeah, if you're ever actually thinking about autumn olive and you're in uh, the United States, go with the buffalo berry. It's super native to uh, Northern Plains, talking like Montana and the Dakotas, Minnesota, Wisconsin, but uh, Northern Michigan, it's good. Same, uh, same moths and butterflies are living here, so they'll dig it. So yeah, plant that silver buffalo berry instead of all in all. Check out edibletrails.org for more information. Ask Jonathan, the coordinator, how to do this in your area. And look, here's our, here's our crew, kids biking, and then once these are fruiting, they can grab some berries as they go. So, yeah, check out edibletrails.org to see how to bring this to your community.